Free World's initiative founder and CEO, Lebohang Mutao, is uh, on Zoom to tell us a little bit more about uh, what we're seeing, young people, literally babies, having babies themselves. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Good evening and Merry Christmas to any one of your viewers who celebrate Christmas. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we've just played a story there and it was shocking to hear of a teen who's 16 um, giving birth for the second time. And a study by um, Barron and others in the South African Medical Journal 2022 uh, say that between 2017 and 2022, the number of children aged between 10 and 14 uh, giving birth has risen by nearly 49%. This is a pandemic. What is happening? It's actually pretty sad. We were having, we were seeing numbers about 60% during COVID of an increase in terms of what we are calling teen pregnancy, but we should really be talking about rape because children at the age of 10 cannot consent to having sex. Uh, we are finding that KZN, we just saw that the, the, there wasn't a highlight in the fact that we need to talk about teen pregnancies when it comes to KZN because KZN is the one, number one, uh, hard is hitting one and what we are seeing it is due to different reasons it is lack of education in terms of the reproductive system it is peer pressure it is the fact that a lot of teens are saying that condoms are either expensive or they are difficult to get their hands on it is also the fact that children are starting their debut of sex at a younger age we're seeing that in south africa we finding girls are debuting with sexual acts at as early as age eight so all of this is contributing to what we are calling calling teen pregnancy where we should be calling it rape. All right, let's talk a little bit more about these definitions because um, I'm wondering, 10-year-olds, uh, 11-year-olds, who's having sex with them? Is it other children uh, or is this adults? we are seeing a wide variety so just the definition of statutory rape there needs to be an age difference of more than two years you can only consent to a sexual act at age 16. so if anyone is having sex before the age of 16 it is called rape and that's why i said we need to stop sugarcoating it and talking about teen pregnancies what we do need to talk about is rape so that we can tackle the seriousness of this problem that we are facing in terms of who they're having sex with Unfortunately, it is a wide variety. They're having sex with their peers. They're having sex with older people. And a lot of them, we are seeing that this is a case of child abuse where 48% of rapes that are reported are, due, are from minors. So it is a very wide range uh, problem. Mm. What is underlying all of this? Is it social conditions? Is it poverty? Is it rural versus urban? What are you finding? Okay. In terms of rural versus urban, we are seeing that in the rural areas, it is a higher percentage. So in overall, we're seeing that 16% age 15 to 19 have already had children, which are babies. And then in terms of that, when we break it down, 11% are urban areas and 19% are in the rural areas. And in, in terms of the overall pregnancy that we are seeing, there's about 83,000 births countrywide that we are seeing. So uh, as much as we'd like to say it is just uh, something that's happening in the urban areas or the rural areas everyone is affected by this mm. pandemic as you rightfully called it all right so i mean there must be untold number of consequences one of them is children are not ready to have children so they could be seriously harmed and perhaps even fatally yeah. There are definitely medical consequences to a child having children because the body is not ready. So we are seeing an increase in conditions like eclampsia. We are seeing endometriosis. We are seeing just the overall infections, but also in terms of the babies that are born, we are finding more premature babies are born. We are finding babies with low birth weights, as well as other conditions that these babies are having to face just to struggle to live. You know, I mean, it's a contentious uh, subject, but terminations 
are legal in South Africa and they are free at medical facilities. When children are falling pregnant, how come they're not getting access to these uh, options, it seems? Okay, so you are absolutely right. In South Africa, the age of consent for uh, termination of pregnancy is age 12, which is the, the legal age of consent for any form of medical treatment. So yes, it is available to them. But what a lot of young people are saying is that the facilities are not friendly to them. It also goes back to the reason that they claim they're falling pregnant as well. Condoms are not easily accessible. When they do go into clinics for sexual reproductive health, they say that they are being turned away. So the nurse nurses' um, um, attitude that we keep hearing over and over again is a big factor in terms of when we look at termination of pregnancy. But termination of pregnancy is also bigger than just getting medical attention. Now we are starting to th talk about people's personal beliefs, how society will deem it. So there is a lot that surrounds termination of pregnancy and the fact that there is not sufficient counseling to get this child to know what their options are. What can be done about it? How does a society deal with this? Uh, because it, I get a sense this is going to have to be a shift. Um, general population. There is a huge shift that is needed. I feel that the first shift that we need to start talking about is education. A lot of children are getting um, pregnant because they do not understand their own reproductive organs so, and the way it, it works. So education is number one. Number two is the youth-friendly centers as well as, the, as teachers who are willing and open to talk to them, but it starts in the home. Education, education, starting at a younger age, making children understand because we are are finding that children are, are developing a lot faster than our generation did. So that conversation between parents and children and both boys and girls, uh, we have been seeing that a lot of responsibility is still placed on the young girl with phrases like uh, the seven Bs, um, books before boys because boys bring babies. So not enough is also being done to bring young boys into these conversations. So these conversations need to be had at younger ages with both boys and girls and just making children aware of what the options are. We've, we, we've walked away from abstinence, you know, which is the most um, safest way of keeping sure that children are not getting HIV infections as well as teen pregnancies. We need to start re-emphasizing things like that, that abstinence is the best way to go about those things. And then also in terms of the availability of contraceptives, if somebody is going to choose to be sexually active, we do need to make sure that they have access to the different forms of contraceptives and see what works best for them but also highlighting the fact that the only thing that will prevent besides the the, the teen pregnancies is um, a condom that will also prevent infections. Lebohang, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very very much indeed uh, for talking to us about uh, this. Uh, I don't think we realize just how serious this problem is but thanks for uh, bringing it up. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, that's uh, Lebohang uh, Mutau, who's a Free World Initiative founder and CEO, talking to us about uh, this uh, alarming uh, rise in teenage pregnancies. Um, children as young as 10 to 14, uh, the number of uh, children that are giving birth to children has increased nearly 49% between 2017 and 2022. That's pretty shocking.